to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right, all right, all right. We're getting ready to head on into Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Greetings to each and every last one of you in the sweet presence and strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King, Jesus Christ, Yahshua Hamashiach. Hey, I'm glad and blessed to have each and every last one of you with us here tonight. We hope you and you and you are having a wonderful time. As you can see, we're back in the saddle. I'm going to get a sign made up right here. So I can stick it back up here. And of course, you know, a few of saints are showing up because everybody enjoys the blog talk radio because they get to see the video presentation here in the tabernacle. Um, so, you know, we have not, well, not what you call a full house, but there are a lot of people that actually come and watch the live video feed. And um, I want to get the same sign that I have made up down there uh, at the uh, broadcasting uh, dungeon office down there. It's, um, like I do on YouTube, I'm put one up here as well. I hope it's all as well, <clears throat> and I hope that each and every last one of you have enjoyed scripture study. I did not mean in any way, shape, fashion, or form to leave you hanging. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Hallelujah. So I tell you what, I tell you what, let me go uh, to a ministry break here just for a second, and I'll be back here in a moment. Hello, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr., 632 Highway 52, Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52, Bypass West, PMB number one, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L A F A Y E T T E, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615 688 3025. You may leave a message there. And be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives, so that they may enjoy the benefits <clears throat> of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom, the King is coming. All right, <clears throat> glory to the king. Uh, where we at here just for a second? Again, many of you are not familiar with the ministry here, and we have a lot of new listeners. So let me go ahead and give you a surprise of your life. I can't understand why in the world are you not full of ruckus and beside yourself? Because I believe the report. They're going to stop receiving all this cancer and garbage. Amen. And in the midst of that, I learned how to not lean to my own. I understand. That's why I got peace. 
Don't you want to be set free? Yeah. Don't you want to have a peace of mind? Yeah. Joy divine? Yeah. Love that will last? Yeah. Can't be surpassed? Yeah. You're going to start doing something about these thoughts. Yeah. They're going to start receiving all this cancer and garbage and diseases. Yeah. Sorry, folks. But it's the truth anyhow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Who's accused of the brother? Yeah. Satan, right? Yeah. Hmm? The Bible says he's doing that day and night. Yeah. Hmm? Not only is he accusing us before God, then he's accusing us amongst each other. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Now, now we, got two, we got two strikes against us. And then we end up accusing ourselves. Now we got three. Amen. I mean, after all, we can't get you to accuse each other. The next thing you do, we just get you to just beat down yourself. Well, we we'll pull some cub off there. We say, we say, whoo, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> pull some cover off the day. Just, look at him, devil. There he is. So you can't let these accusing spirits have a place. And so if you want that peace of mind, brother, so you can have it. Because our Jesus is good. I ain't know we're going to have some music this morning. <laughs> you keep on plowing and stuff on. Amen. So the devil, Satan, is the one, I'm telling you, he's the accused of the brother. So if he can't get you, hey, if I accuse you before the father, and then you're accusing each other, you follow me? Next thing you know, he's going to have you to, a, accusing your own self. Is that right? He's going to have you accusing your own self. They'll take care of you. Y'all come on with me. We bless Satan. Boy, these spirits, boy, they smell melts, ain't they? <laughs> and I'm telling you, that's one thing that Satan does. Because if he can't get you through everybody else, then the last resort is to get yourself. Now yeah. uh -huh. see, that's why the Bible, the Bible tells us we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Amen. Huh? Come out, demon. Come out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Good preaching, isn't it? Yeah. Good preaching. I know it is. Hey, y'all deliverance workers, make sure y'all listen. All right. Greetings. Hallelujah. Hey, <clears throat> for those of you who are not familiar with spiritual warfare, don't you think for one moment, do not ever think for one moment that we are not in a spiritual war. Because this war is very, very real. And most people are not familiar with it. As a matter of fact, many of us, we have been churched. Many of us have come up being religious. And, you know, it'll be a surprise of your life if you have never been into a real, viable New Testament ministry. It'll behoove you, providing that we invite you, to try to come to straightway sometime. Try to come straightway sometime when we're doing mass deliverance and, and get ready to get the shock of your life. Not only the shock of your life, but delivered. <clears throat> well, I have a lot of people enjoying scripture study. And believe me, I do have an answer uh, in reference to Yaptah. I do have an answer uh, that I've come to the conclusion with, but I think that it's very scholarly of us to actually go the way <clears throat> of giving both sides of the fence. And the reason being is because that way it will stimulate thought and mind and let you know that we have done our due diligence in order to come to a real viable answer. But you get to know the pros and the cons, and if you ever have an opportunity to where that you're actually going to um, be speaking to someone about this subject, you can talk to them. You can talk to them about the subject. 
and you can shed a lot of light on it. Because then, when people like running down Yahweh, when they like accusing him of certain things, you can actually back up the word, his character, his integrity, because after all, we are ambassadors of the kingdom, and the most high have given it to us. You can understand what I mean. Don't come up here. All right. He has given it to us. And we, you don't you look, look, Tori, you on the air. Wave at the people out there. Wave. Wave. You're not going to wave. All right. See everybody waving at you? And this little toy right here. And I guess she's going to give me this. Yeah, give me that. <laughs> All right, now wave. Wait, right, there you go. There you go right there. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Well, anyway, hey, we have an answer. Um, and, and we're going to give you what our findings are. And I think it's very sound. It, it would behoove you to not listen to me very closely. And I don't mean to sound like that I'm being, you know how I many you have your head hardwired when you start dealing with translations. Some of you believe that the King James Version is the perfect Bible. Let me tell you something. There's no perfect Bible. But there are, there is a perfect Yahweh who gave us a perfect word, who the apostles and prophets who received it from the perfect king of glory, they gave it to us right. But by the time the translators got a hold of it, we all twisted, whooping the story. Let me listen to me very close. And I've been saying that a lot the last few Shabbats. And I want y'all to listen to me real, real good, okay? You remember me telling y'all that the translators didn't have a lick of inspiration up under him. It's not hard to see that when you read a lot of versions of these scriptures, a lot of versions of these Bibles, it's not hard to see that these people had an agenda. It's not hard to see um, that the Europeans who took out the Apocrypha, it's not hard to see that they had an agenda. It's not hard to see that, you know, think about this. If anybody in our culture today read, listen to me very closely, if, if they read the Maccabees, just the book of the Maccabees, if they read any of that, it would be easy for them to come to the conclusion, why in the world are we eating this swine? And then not only that, it begins to expose to you the nature and the character of these people who have been so merciless at rooting out, hunting down Israelites. Don't make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. All the nations, are you folks listening to me? Let me cut on the chat board and launch the chat board in here for a second inside Blog Talk Radio. I can't see the one. I used to be able to see the one online right now at the website, but I'm going to go in here. Are you folks listening to me? Listen, all nations, every single one of them are servants of the devil. They all serve demonic spirits, whether you like it or not. You used to serve demonic spirits, whether you like it or not. Um, even if you were serving your own self, you serve a demon, whether you like it or not. Makes no difference whether you understand it or not. Um, but only the Elohim of the Hebrews, this is what this whole cosmos is all about. is raging war against the saints. And sometimes you get sidetracked. Life comes in. The cares of this life. Riches and all kind of other stuff. You begin to choke out the word. And the word is not your priority no more. But stuff is your word. Um, the word is not your priority no more, but junk is your priority. Word is not your priority no more, but family is your priority. Word, the word is not your priority no more, but you see, the devil sidetracks you, and he whatever he does, he always trying to displace the most high 
from being first and foremost in your mind. And we are bitten of the fruit of lies. And boy, have we bitten in hook, line, and sinker. That's the reason why you see a lot of people being religious, but they don't have no power. No power. Jesus said, listen to me very closely. If you can hear me, type in the word, the number two. Type in the number two. Jesus said, and let me show you what he, look what he said. He said, if you cannot believe my words. Are y'all listening? If you cannot believe my words. And most of you people are having a hard time. And you have a difficult time believing Pastor Dow's words. Or any of the words that come from anybody of the straightway truth ministry. You're having a hard time believing the words. Then you know what the Messiah said? If you can't believe my words, then believe my works. Because they testify. Believe my miracles. Because it's the Father. He is the one that is doing the work. You see, anytime somebody's casting out devils, which your churches and your pastors and your preachers and teachers and your religious assemblies, they don't do this. They talk about the devil, but they never oppose his kingdom. Anytime somebody healed the sick, with your pastors, your preachers, your teachers, your street preachers, your elders, your bishops, your generals, your, your captains, they don't do it. Anytime someone does anything to oppose the kingdom of Satan, and they can back it up with proof text of viable power that is already stated in the, in the um, New Testament, then guess what? You're looking at real, true, bona fide disciples of Christ in the midst of this wicked and perverse generation that we're living in. And I know that many of you are having a hard time understanding that, biting off on that and getting it. But the truth is, there are people who are representing, who are ambassadors to the kingdom of Yah, and then there's you imposters. There's those of you who are religious. There are those of you who are stage players. There are those of you who just simply do not. Did y'all know that the prophets had power? Y'all know that Moses did miracles? Did y'all know Elijah did miracles and Elisha did miracles? Did y'all know that? All these people today in a religious tender, all they have is words. That's all they have is just words. Words. Some of them can holler real good. They can scream real good. But all they have, and when it's all said and done, the smoke is clear. Words. That's it. But everybody's enjoying the scripture study. We're going to have a wonderful time doing the scripture study because it's definitely going to inform the saints of the Most High. Um, the Most High, Yah, saw fit for us to go on up into the next level of knowledge and understanding. If you notice, we keep growing. We keep getting growing better and better. And we're getting stronger and stronger because we're growing in the grace and in the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what we're doing. In this time, we are growing in that grace and in that knowledge. And I would be, that would behoove many of you to do the same thing. Don't get sidetracked and don't get caught up in the circus of this world that would take your mind off of Christ. Too many of us have got too much stuff going on. And when it's all said and done, you ain't got nothing going on but a bunch of foolishness and a bunch of mess. Oh, I pray, oh, the, the Holy Spirit gives you an unction. The Holy Spirit is pulling and tugging on your heart. The Holy Spirit is really getting after you. The Holy Spirit, and then you'll go, oh, I'll pray, I'll pray, and one week goes by, you still don't do it. Oh, the Holy Spirit is really getting on you to fast. Uh, two months go by, and you have never even skipped one meal. See, the, the cares of this world has just literally just done consumed a lot of people. That's the reason why they can't produce fruit. By their fruit, you shall know them. Enough of the noise, enough of the hollering, enough of the screaming. Who are the real disciples of Christ? That's what it is. All right. But, hey, I'm enjoying this study on Yepta. But I tell you what, it sure does cause me to spend a lot of midnight oil. Ooh, boy, I appreciate it. Yeah. But anyway, hey, um, we got the T-Seats newsletter. Um, I just got it back from the proofreader again, 
And what I'm going to do is, um, is I'm going to go over it, make the necessary corrections. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more to it. Then I'm going to send it on up to Sister Wenda and Brother Steve. Brother Steve is going to perform his arts, his professional arts on it and give it the professional look that he always does. Um, and we do appreciate the labor of love, Brother Steve, that you and Sister Wenda do for not only the most high, but for his ministries. We really truly do. We appreciate the labor of love. I appreciate the labor of love of all the saints. I do. I love them. Right now, we you know we're we're gonna we're about two weeks out from Passover, and we are looking at the biggest Passover ever in the history of Straightway. We're right now last count. And that's including some people counseling. But last count, we are at 270 people that are planning on attending Passover here straightway. That is a lot of Israelites. That is a lot of Israelites. A lot of Israelites. Hey, and let me tell y'all something. Pastor Dow, I'm telling you, man, the government loves taxing us. Y'all know that, right? For those of you who, who actually give to the ministry and donate to the cause, I do appreciate it. Um, you know, your your gifts, your offerings, your letter of support, bought these nice, fancy little chairs that everybody get to sit on when they come here for the feast days. We just got finished ordering another 50. Y'all know all those blue chairs that we sit on inside the assembly? Those are not cheap chairs. <laughs> they are not cheap chairs at all. They, they got like four and a half inch cushion on them. They got this big back on them. And man, when you sit down on them things, they're like, whoa, we just ordered another 50 to give us exactly 200 of those chairs in the tabernacle. Exactly 200 of them. And of course, we have other chairs, other than the blue older chairs that we can put around in other areas and fill in the gaps and stuff. Uh, we have the room, but it is letting us know that myself and the brethren, that um, after we do a little bit of homework or home working on this land, uh, we've got plans to extend the tabernacle out another 20 feet in the front as well and um, extend this thing so we can make sure we can comfortably seat 320 people. Um, right now, we should be able to handle it pretty good. Especially when we use all the space and everything we got. We, we, we should be able to handle it well. We should be able to handle 270 people well. But we're looking at 270 Israelites that's going to be descending on Lafayette, Tennessee. To come and celebrate Passover in the place where Yahweh chooses. Now, for those of you who faithfully give to the ministry. Can I ask a favor? The favor is this. Could you either make sure that you either try to send by postal money order. U.S. Postal Money Order, or if you're going to send cash, send it like in one of those two, three-day uh, delivery confirmation packages. Um, you know, I think you can pay like $5 for it because if you're sending $100, take $5 out of that $100 offering that you're sending and, and put it in one of those packages rather than just a regular old white envelope because, you know, these people at the post office becoming entrepreneurs today. A lot of them gotten pay raises because you sent cash by regular mail and didn't stick it in one of those little priority things that you pay like $5 for. And to make sure that you put another 20 or 30 cents for delivery confirmation, man, their pocket's getting lined. They're like, man, a regular old envelope and it's going to pass the dial. Let me feel a Woo, boy, man, hey, I just made me another $100 this week, boy. And that's how they're doing it. These people are becoming entrepreneurs today. But I really do appreciate it. Um, if if you only have means to send a regular check, or if it, you, know, you can, only, or, or if you can get a MoneyGram money order from Walmart or MoneyGram, Walmart would, ca would cash it too. I appreciate receiving stuff in that in that avenue and that venue. Um, um, it, many people don't use Dweller, but if you choose to, you can still use Dweller because there's not enough there um, to actually hit me in taxes as far as gathering. Um, you know, I mean the saints, but you know what? I'm with you, brother. Ugly. It it, 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 it could be just about 300 people, 300 people at Passover this year, um, because you know there are people that that just show up at the last uh, three, four days. They call and say we need to come. Now, if you're planning on attending, 
Passover with us. You need to make sure you call to this dining hall and you leave your name. You leave your name with the sisters so they can add you to this because logistically, think about it. 300 people for three days? Do you understand the logistics in that? Can you think a little bit? Do you understand what that's going to cost? I don't mind because we love selling, celebrating Passover with the saints of the Most High. Hallelujah. Now we got that out of the way. Hey, we are not wearing uh, wonderful Hebrew garments. Now, you can, if you choose to, you can. I have plenty of them, uh, thanks to Sister Vicky and Mother Bullock. I have plenty of them. But if you choose to, you can wear, if you've got more than one garment, you can wear your Hebrew garment during um Passover night, or what the world calls Friday night. All right? Well, Brother Windows, I mean, Brother Steve is something else. He says, wow, that's 2,700 meals. <laughs> you hear that? Sister Carol, he done did the math that fast. 2,700 meals we're going to be uh, actually providing <laughs> these three days. <laughs> Them sisters are going to be working. I tell you what, they're going to be working. Uh, but anyway, um, what was I at? Boy, I hate that. You know, it's like you, you go to pop, and then a drop off. You go, whoop, pop, and then a drop off. Maybe somebody can tell me where I was at. I, ain't, well, I can't remember where I was. Wherever I was, I was there. Um, and now I'm, I'm lost. Now I need to be found again. But anyway, um, and I forgot my train of thought. Hebrew garments. Hebrew garments. Um, if you choose to wear your secondary Hebrew garment on that night, that'll be fine and good. But Shabbat morning, we are going to be taking a wonderful cheese pitcher. And, of course, it's going to be posted online. We're going to make sure that, that we put it in such a way online, Brother Steve, that you can actually take a jump drive, take it off there, and you can take it to a printing place and print it and and and. Frame it and put it in your wonderful home of abode if you want to. Because this Passover is unique. Because this Passover, we're starting to see the Hebrew Israelites, people starting to change their dress on Shabbat. People are starting to look like Hebrews. We, we're proud of our heritage. We're proud of our nationality, our customs. And of course, Brother Steve always makes sure that is a very high quality resolution so that when you do go take this to get it printed out. It's there, just like the newsletter. Man, have people been raving about the newsletter. Uh, mostly what I'm getting is this. This is what I'm mostly getting. Pastor Down, I am mad as hell. It seems like every single time we turn around, we find you find something that is wickedly wrong with the translation of these so-called words that is getting, hey, you know what? Elder Doug and I, we have literally been um, giving good reviews over the Young's literal translation. Strong's is it, a pretty good Concordance. You know, I also have a Vines Expository Dictionary of New Testament words that I that I use a little bit. But that Brown Drivers Briggs, Briggs and that Ernest Klein, man, I tell you, if you really want to get to the root of what these words mean, you're gonna find out that these King James translators had an agenda. And you know, listen to me. They know that if they word something a certain way. That your mind, being trained after this English system, will think this way. Because after all, they have trained you. You have not been educated in this country. You have been trained. The best education is when you can use this mind up here that the Most High is giving you to educate yourself and then function after it and being holy. Because he's holy. But, man, I'll tell you what. They know that if you read this Bible, that your thoughts will go this way because, after all, they have taught you how to think. But however you come out of her, my people, if you study to show yourself approved, 
If you be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, you're going to have an alternate consciousness. You're going to think like a real true Israelite. And the devil, look at him. He is a liar. And he will not get by you or anyone else. I'll tell you one thing. One thing about this ministry right here. Man, we sure do keep people on their toes when we deliver the information. Boy, we keep putting the information out. Uh, so y'all get yourself ready for purging yourself. Now, I, lo I looked at a video Brother Eric did today, and he made very good points. Um, now, we don't clean the leaven out of our houses physically here. We clean the leaven out of this. But however, if you choose to clean out the leaven out of your physical house, nothing wrong with it. But the good point that he brought out was this, and it is an excellent point. Do you know how tedious it is to clean leaven out of your house? Leaven also has to do with dust and dirt. Dust balls, uh, yeast of any kind, anything that rises. A lot of these uh, products that you think that don't have it in it, it's got it in it. Think about that. But if you understood the natural first of how tedious it is to get leaven out of the house, think about this. How meticulous does the Most High want you to be when looking at your spiritual house? Do not be, and I want you to hear my words. Go look at last year's Passover picture. Would you please go look at it? While you're looking at last year's Passover picture, I want you to mock all them that are no longer with us because they decided to take a, the Most High's Passover and they did it unworthily. I told you what the devil is using more than anything to deceive the people today. He's using offenses. You see, malice in your heart. Malice is ill will. Let me ask you a question. Do you have any ill will with anybody? You better not take this Passover. You better not. You will not make it to the next Passover. The Most High is not playing with his people. These people playing church, these people out in the world, it seems like they're getting away with everything. We as Israelites, the Most High is not toying around with us. Go look and see how many people are no longer part of the ministry, even because they decide to walk away. And mind you, I'll say it again. I have not had one person ever to show me how to live holy that has ever left here. I didn't bring them here. The Most High bought them here. They'll tell you that. I guess the Most High told him to leave too. Because we still in the we still in the fight. We're in the battle. We are still in the war. Serving the Most High Yah. And the one thing about straightway, we have tenure. About 25 years worth of tenure. Of where we continually keep growing. And keep growing. And keep growing. And as the road gets narrow, I tell you what, Pastor Dallas, ah, get out of my way. 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 It's getting narrow. I'm staying on the path. And if I got to knock you off the path to stay on it, bye-bye. <laughs> ah, ah. Because the kingdom of heaven suffer violent, but the violent take it by force. Now, if you're following me, you better sew yourself to my garments. You better grab a hold of my hair. I ain't got too much of it on my head anyway. You better do whatever you can. You better get some gorilla glue. Some super glue, and you better start gluing yourself to saints to make sure that you don't ever get off this road because I am telling you that the most high is not playing with the Israelites. Do not be vain and come to this year's pesca service and take this Passover unworthy because you will not be around for the next one. Or all the ones that are left over for the rest of your life. Because there's one thing about it. When people leave this ministry, you got two ways to go. Either you go back to Christianity or you go nowhere and you forsake the fellowship of the saints. Us, It has become a mannerism today of some. 
all because of fences. I'm getting reports that all these people that have agreed together to leave and be offended and start all kind of mess, they start fellowship, guess what? A few months later, they're at each other's throat, and they can't even fellowship. They got hatred. Not, uh, listen to me. Do not come to this Passover harvesting malice and ill will in your heart. The Most High will cut your ass off from his kingdom. Because we are the ambassadors of the kingdom. We've got to rule in this world. I'm telling you, don't talk. Don't go into this next Passover with an offense in your heart against anyone. You better clear, create in me a clean heart. Oh, yeah. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Oh, yeah. And renew a right spirit within me <laughs> have you ever heard of this song before it goes cast me not away from thy presence oh yeah listen very closely and take not thine holy spirit from me Unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. That should be your song, your theme song for this year's Pesca. We're reaching out. We're doing everything we can to recover the remnant of Israel. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the most high is not playing games. Keep yourself in the love of Yah. Get rid of the leaven that is in your heart. Because remember, by this, all men shall know you are my disciples. How are they going to know this? By the love that you have one for another. I'm telling you, you better get clean. I can't get clean for you. All I can do is preach, prophesy to the wind, whether they hear or forbear. Shout, cry loud, and spare not. Lift up my voice like a trumpet. That's all I can do. And show the house of Israel, Yah's people, their transgressions and their wicked, wicked ways. You can choose to hear, or you can be arrogant and think that you're something when you're nothing. And in this age of reprobate mind, have you ever seen a reprobate person or a person with a reprobate mind ever deny the Messiah? Have you? I mean, think about some of these people. Esau sought repentance carefully with tears and he couldn't get it. He could not get it. Is that something? Woo. There's a lot of people, a lot of people today that they're reprobate and don't even know it. Hey, let me tell you, I got a news flash for you. All you people out there that hate Pastor Dow, guess what? You got to love me in order to get into the kingdom. Because like it or not, I'm going to the kingdom. I'm keeping the commandments. That's a news flash for you, isn't it? <laughs> Whoa, brother. Oh, sister. I'll tell you what. We better get our hearts right. We had better get our hearts right. We had better get our wicked hearts right. I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to give y'all the seriousness. Whew. Help us, Father. Have mercy on us. 
Glory to the King. Now somebody said, I got, hey, let, let uh, Sister Kalani know I got Torah's thing in here. Hey, let me tell y'all something. I want y'all to understand something. All right? This thing is real. And most people are playing games. They play church and Christianity. They get convicted over here. They do good for a while. And then they play church again. And they think they're going to get by over here. But to much is given, much is required. I hope y'all get it. I really truly do. I hope you get it. That's my prayer. Think about this. I done celebrated 25 Passovers. 25 of them. Y'all kept me all this time. I think I know how to be kept in the love of God. You may want to find out what that secret is. It all starts with fear. Beginning of wisdom. Keeping his commandments. Let's go to guest call-in number. Let's go into the call line, all right? Before we head off into the call queue there, guest call-in number is 310-982-4226. Come in the queue, you press number one. Pastor Dollar will be there. But you're going to hear an automated voice of a woman. If you hear a voice, you press one, you're in the call queue. You don't, you ain't in the call queue. All you're doing is listen to the show. Lord to the King. Um, but like I said, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I have the answer to Yepto. Yeah, I do too. And I believe, not only I believe, I know I'm right. <laughs> Just like I was right about that last newsletter. Oh boy, did I knock that, now did I knock it out of the park that time by the power of the Ruah? I knocked it out of the park. Get ready for more coming. Wait till you hear, wait till you read this letter on Teak Seats. Wait till you read this newsletter on Deep Seats, Deep Seats, Deep Seats, Deep Seats, Deep Seats, Deep Seats, Deep Seats. Wait till you read it. <laughs> Woo! Ashkenazi, 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 Ashkenazi. <laughs> Oh, boy, y'all going to fall out on this newsletter on the teeth I did. Let me tell y'all something. I think the last thing you people want to do is continue to keep enticing me to venture off in areas that I usually don't even pay too much attention to, but I don't mind. Once the Father give me clearance to jump right on into that truth, I don't mind, but most of you are not going to like these findings because... When you read my newsletters, and I got a nice team that helps me on those newsletters, there is zero wiggle room to get out of that truth because I spend an extraordinary amount of time in prayer, fastings, research, study, and meditation, hearing from the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, most, I'm telling you, whoo, y'all in trouble. Hallelujah. Guest call number 310-982-4226, Pastor Dow. Hey, I'll be right back here for a second. Let's go to Demon Cuts number two for those of you who are not familiar with it, because we're going to cast out some devils during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, it came out of him. Mass Deliverance, September 2002. But Jesus, come out, loose them, and set them free in the name of Jesus. So there's a drug addiction. Come out in the name of Jesus. Loose them and set them free. Come over here, right here. Get on up here. Right there. Listen, set up free right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus. Listen, set up free right now. Spears of explosive. Spears of verbal abuse. Spears of martial art. Spears of cruelty. Spears of hatred. Come out in Jesus' name. 
All these demons are crying out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, spirits of lust, in the name of Jesus. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Tyler, Texas, 14 December, 2002. Come out of him right now in Jesus' name. I'm binding you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm binding you right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of him. 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 second while I try to find some spots. Alright, I promise you we'll get to your phone calls in two minutes, okay? Two minutes. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address or your gift, offering, or letter of support is Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. 632 Highway 52 Bypass West That's 632 
Highway 52 Bypass West, PMB number one, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L A F A Y E T T E, Tennessee. 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom, the King is coming. I wonder how she do that. You know, how in the world does Sister Wenda speak so clear, precise, concise? Her pronunciation is perfect and spot on. And how in the world do you do that, man? I... I need some polishing. <laughs> Good job, Sister Wendell. All right, New York, New York, Brother Will. Calling number 716-716. This is Pastor Dow, you know, Straight With You Radio Broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Will? Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, my beloved pastor, my Ra'ah, my shepherd. How are you doing tonight, Pastor Dow? Doing well, doing well. You have his what? Hey, bro, we, we got your Hebrew garment at the house, okay? Hallelujah, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sister Carol just told me. Bless you, my brother. Good to hear from you. How can I help you? Yeah, I was just calling in to say uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, to all the saints there at Straightway, all the saints at Shofar Mountain. I can't wait to see you all soon. Uh, see all the brothers, the sisters, pastors, elders, and the children. And, um, also wanted to call in, uh, speak on the newsletter that you did. Wow, Pastor. Yeah, that's here. That's just amazing. I, yeah, it was good. I, um, it's funny because I uh, usually go to sleep around 8.30, 9.30 because I got to go to work early in the morning. Yes, sir. But that night that Brother Steve posted it, I uh, actually stood up. And when I seen him that he posted that newsletter, I just went on reading it to 1 o'clock in the morning. I was stuck to it. I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. And um, after reading it, man, Pastor, it's just amazing how these wicked translators try their hardest to keep the truth away from the people. I'll tell you what, bro, Will, it makes you mad, don't it? Yes, sir. I, uh, I send you an email, like you said, and I, I go more into detail in that, how I was furious. And, uh, yeah. you know, like you tell us to uh, check you out and, you know, to, uh, you know, it, check you out and to do our own independent research. I, after I, I read the newsletter, I actually read uh, other Bible translations. And like uh, like Brother Emmy said uh, a couple of weeks ago when he called in, the newer translations actually have that verse right. Man, and that's that something. Just amazed. Yes, sir, it's just a lot of confusion, and that's another reason why you know, we need the Holy Spirit. You know, nowadays a lot of people say that we don't need it. That's one reason that we do need it. Because that's the spirit of truth. We got to search the things out and hold fast to that, which is good. Hey, bro, Will. Wait till I uncover. Yes, sir. I'm gonna uncover. I'm gonna uncover a gold mine of truth this year. <laughs> Hallelujah, Pastor. Can't wait. And um, with that, you know, with that said, I uh, I, I want to read a, a verse, if I may, Pastor. Yes, sir. By all means, let's hear it. Say on. It's uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13. And it says, And I gave my heart to seek and yeah. search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath Elohim given to the sons of man mm -hmm. to be exercised therewith. Mm -hmm. And that really hits home because that's what we as Israelites should do diligently to search out matters. And, you know, Elohim, uh, Elohim he, he hides them, but then it's our duty to search them out. That's right. 
That's right, my brother. Stay home. Hallelujah, Pastor. And uh, one last thing, Pastor. I just want to thank you again. I mean, you've done so much for me, and I can only speak for myself uh, when I say this, but uh, I believe that other, other saints would agree, especially uh, uh, the other young brethren out there, you know. You know, we, many of us did not have a, a role model of holiness out there, and I can truly say, Pastor, that, you know, we look up to you and all the elders, and we really appreciate what you're doing, and seeing you walk in this truth and, and walking in Torah, it makes my heart glad, because that's something that I can inspire to do one day, to that I'm doing actually right now, Pastor, and I just want to thank you, and I, there's no words to describe it, Pastor. i tell you one thing, brother, and you know it's the truth. I believe in strengthening men. I believe that. And yes, not only that, I, I 100% believe in the patriarchal rule. And not only that, brother, um, I tell you, I hate this culture. I hate this, this, this United States of America heritage. I love my heritage, which has been stolen from it. I hate everything that Christianity stands for, but I love my people. I love the law. I love the people of the book. I love you. I love all the I love all the saints on the land and the tabernacle, all the Israelites that are coming to the feast. I'm privileged and honored to be able to be a servant to you people on this side of glory. I I definitely need your prayers. Because if it wasn't for you faithful Israelite people praying for Pastor Dow. Man, no telling what kind of stuff y'all keeping me from from the devil out there, man. Because Satan is raging. War. You know, do y'all know how bad Satan would love for this mouth to shut up? Do y'all know that? Do y'all know how bad that people wished that I'd show up? There's most, I mean, shut up. There's a lot of people out there wished that, that one day I would end up jumping off a cliff. Can you believe that? <laughs> yes, sir. That's right. That's right. So I need y'all prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, sir. Well, Pastor, that's all I had to say. Um, can't wait to see you and all of the saints for Passover. I'll be uh, flying in and arriving there on the 3rd in the morning. All right. Uh, can't wait to see you and uh, hug your neck and kiss your cheek, Pastor. All right, my brother. Looking forward to seeing you too, Israel. Y'all blessed. Be encouraged. King coming. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. Bro, Will, beautiful Israelite, beautiful Israelite. Oh, and since many of y'all are traveling here for the feast, and you know, most of y'all don't have cows, um, bulls, bullocks, turtle doves, pigeons, cassette, all that other stuff. When you come, just bring some of them worthless Federal Reserve notes. And people ask me all the time, Pastor, how do we give the ministry an offering? Well, you just walk right up to me and just give it to me because we don't have a tied an offering box. You don't have an offering box in this place. Just walk up to me, give it to me, say, bless you, man, of y'all. And I say, thank you and bless you. I promise you right back. And, man, you don't believe how many people. I've got testimony from people in this ministry that paid off seventy and $80,000 worth of debt in, in less in one year, I I got I give testimonies of people getting out of debt, left and right all over the place, and these people are givers. I know many of you can't fathom it. I know it's hard to fathom, but the Most High makes a way. He does it. Let's go to New York, New York, big city of dreams, to Brother Junior, the certifiable. Nine two nine nine two nine. Boom. Junior. This is Pastor Dow. You want to straight with you? How can I help you, brother? Shalom. Shabbat shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, my brother I'm so Junior. Excited. You make, yes, sir. You make my night sorry, man. You make my night talk about Passover. <laughs> Y'all ain't playing games. You make my night. Hallelujah. About talking about the truth, about the um, about the um, Bible study, and um, the song you want to sing for Passover, that song, you got to sing? That's on the songs, right? If you want to hear it, Junior, we will sing it. Yeah, I want to sing. Oh, yes, yes. That's on the songs? 
Oh, oh yeah. Then I just got finished singing. Yes, sir. That's one of the songs. Yes, sir. Good. Good. I'm going to ask you. Yes, sir. Because last year, last year, you sang you song, song 27. That's beautiful, too. Hallelujah. And I love, <laughs> love singing them songs, brother. Yes, sir. They they touched my heart, too, man. They touched my heart. Woo! Man, they, woo! I feel you. I feel you, Pastor. Man, I can't wait for Passover, man. I can't even see you, man. Passover. I can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. Same here, bro, Junior. Same here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. That's the best time of the year. The it, they come up, that's the best time of the year. Bro, Junior, bring your camera. Yes. Bring your camera with yes. you, brother, because, brother, there's going to be a lot of Israelites here. We can take a lot of good pictures as we enjoy Yahweh's feast. Yes, sir. Let's start to be taking pictures. I'm, I'm glad Pastor... Sure, I'm glad Pastor Tatum and Pastor Corey is coming because, boy, I'm going to need some help with all these baptisms we may have to perform. Woo! I know. 270 people, that's a record. There it is. <laughs> Probably be 30 more people. Probably be more and more people. going to be 300. Hey, Junior. <laughs> hey, Junior. Woo! We, um, all these people who were disgruntled and couldn't handle doctrinal truth because... All their truth is built on sinking sand. And truth, when it's built on a solid rock foundation, the wind can blow. The rains can smash again it, against it. The waves can try to hit against it. But because that building is built on a solid foundation, a solid rock, it can't stand. I mean, it, it will not fall. You think about this. People thought that since I'm preaching and teaching polygyny now, that it will destroy the ministry. And look what it's doing. It's blowing it up and making it bigger. <laughs> ah, look at you, devil. <laughs> because it's true. Truth is built on a rock. Exactly. Truth is built on Christ. Truth is built on Christ. He's a rock. Come on. And on um, patriarchal rule. Come on. This, that's all over the Bible. That's what you got to believe. You better believe. Yeah, been out that, that. Come on. Like, so, I'm on white pass, second wife. Oh, I had white first, right? That's an example. Like, um, so I had white first, right? Y'all see me out doing the work, right? I was out of second wife, right? I'm going to ask you, you know, I'm going to go with you and the elders. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know the Bible more than me. I listen longer than me. You know what I'm saying? Give me advice. I'll take your advice. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, one thing I don't right. recommend, I don't recommend right. brethren looking for a second wife when they can't even take care of the first one and rule their own house with the first one. Exactly. If I do that, if I do that, everything, I make mean, all the criteria of the first wife. I do everything that's mentioned. If I'm, I desire a second one, I go with you and the elders about it, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. What to do, how to do, you know what I'm saying? But you know. know you know, you live longer than me. Well, yes. they call it a second wife. It's really just another wife because it's just an additional covenant. It's an, it's an additional wife. That's the way we should talk because that's the way that the Most High sees it in the Scripture. But um, glory to the King. Man, Junior, we're looking forward to seeing you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Basically, you know, grow the seed. You know what I'm saying? Yes. People in our, in our culture has second wives and third to grow the seed. You know what I'm saying? For the, the seed. Grow a tree bigger, basically. Well, the Gentiles have dealt with us very wisely through that fabrication in their lives. And since truth and knowledge is being increased in this last day, the Most High Yah is not going to leave no stone unturned, no matter how many people like it or dislike it. Hey, we just here. It's just the truth. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. You're on point, man. Keep preaching, Pastor. Keep pre preaching that word, man. I'll be seeing you next week, Pastor Bow. All right, Brother Junior. I'll be seeing you. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Lord to the King. There's Brother Junior. Let's go to where we at. Uh, Brother Eric in Nebraska calling number 308308. To Brother Eric in Nebraska, this is Pastor Dow. You know, Survey 230 Radio Broadcast. I can help you, Brother Eric. Shabbat Shalom, my shepherd. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Eric. Shabbat Shalom. I can help you, my brother. Well, I love your song you were singing earlier. 
Hey, that's one of the songs. The, the song of the song. Yes, sir. That was blast. Glory to the king. I also like your cheek, 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 cheek. Oh, that had me laughing. <laughs> Wait till you read this newsletter on his TTC. Now you're gonna love it, brother. You're gonna love it. Well, I started on your last one, and I definitely need to pursue that more. I've been really, uh, you know, studying the the Judges 11, so I can try to keep up with with what you bring forth. And but I did read some of that letter, and I, it was Ecclesiasticus, wasn't it? That you, what the scripture was from about the musical instrument? Yes, sir. Ecclesiasticus two eight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And from what I read, you were bringing forth, going behind the words. And what, what I love about you is that you know the Torah, and you replied it, and I spoke to you about that. So you have wisdom. You know the Father. Mm -hmm. So when you know the Father and you're reading through the Word, you can see, without even going behind the words, that something don't add up, something ain't right. That's right. That's right, Which bro. Which you to dig deeper. But if it wasn't for that understanding of who your Father is, you wouldn't even know. True. But I love that. And, you know, I was thinking, I was studying, and I know the Father's giving you the revelation on, the, on Judges 11. Oh, yeah. I'm very, very confident in that. And, and I was studying here the other night, and I began to realize, you know, uh, Pastor, a just man, he'll bring his goods up to be measured on the scale before he goes out and does his business amongst the people to make sure he has right and just measures. And I know that with you because the Torah... Is a scale on which all understanding must be weighed. And you're willing to go up to the scale of Torah and to weigh your understanding, and if it don't add up, you don't throw the Torah out, you don't throw the scale out and blame it. You dump the contents of the cup out and you start over. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed these unjust men, they're the ones that go around amongst the people selling their goods, and when they're called up to go up and put their goods on the scale, they're nowhere to be found. And it shows me that it, it's not that they're deceived, because a deceived man would go up like the Pharisees, right? Yep. And go up and challenge and debate a man face to face and put everything they have out there on the scale. And then the Messiah would show them that they were they were doing, un, you know, preaching unjust measures and had unjust goods. But these men that won't come up and face you, and won't come up and bring their goods forth to be weighed in front of the elders, it shows me they're not really deceived. I believe that, that they know that they're using unjust weight. You know, I'm probably with well, you what there. What do you say, Pastor? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you when you, you think about it. Yes, sir. I, I believe that these people are, are there to police the minds of the people, to deceive the minds of the people while they hold the key of knowledge. Remember, that's what the Messiah says. Um, these The Pharisees, the scribes, he says, everything that they bid you to do, you do it. But just don't do after their works. And that means that these, these Pharisees, the scribes, they had the key of knowledge, but they shut it up for themselves, but they used it to police the people. So you're right. They know, but they're holding the truth in unrighteousness. Very good job. Hallelujah. Well, bless you, Shepherd. That's that's all I had, and and I just wanted to, you know, thank you that you weigh everything on the scales of Torah and make sure that it balances first before you bring it forth before the people, and you have no fear in doing so. And that's a just man, and I commend you for it. Well, Hallelujah! Keep praying for me. Keep praying for me, my brother. Yes, sir. Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. There's brother Eric out in Nebraska. Hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something. I don't have time to toy around. I'm finished with mundane, living, cheap talk, the whole nine yards. The scripture cannot be broken. And by the way, somebody asked me the other day, well, where's that at? Where's that? That's part of a text in the New Testament. You'll probably find it in TTIU, the 10th chapter, if you will go there and look. But um, I tell you what, people don't. I don't want to hear my personal opinion. I know you find it hard to believe, but I don't want to hear it. The Bible says that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of y'all. I don't want, 
I'm not going to give you my personal opinion. You don't give a damn about my personal opinion, and I don't give a damn about yours. It's just the truth. All that matters is Yahweh's truth. And it's up to us to conform to his image. Um, and, and if I ain't got something right, I'm, I'm wiping the hard drive, and I'm throwing it away, and I'm getting with Yahweh's program. That's just, I thought, hey, it's the best. It's the safest place there is in the universe. Let's go to Virginia. Call the number 540-540 to Brother Freeman. Brother Freeman there in Virginia. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Straight Way 230 Radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Freeman. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. How are you? I'm blessed the most high. Yeah, I'm just uh, listening to you, Pastor. And uh, I just want to say you the truth, Pastor. Glory to the King. Uh, well, I, I have the spirit of truth in me. Yes, sir. That that is the truth. Hallelujah! And I just wanna, I just wanna thank you for. Uh, <laughs> I just wanna thank you. I just don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know what to say, Pastor. But all the stuff you've been teaching has just been so profound. Everything you go, everything you say, pretty much, Pastor. You can go back and search it to see if it's true, Pastor. And everything has been right on spot. So. Uh, I just thank you for that. And there's not, uh, I haven't met anybody out there like that, Pastor. And the ministry, as far as the ministry, you know, you say you better find find someone that's uh, doing this thing and glue yourself to them. And uh, I definitely, uh, I'm hearing your words and uh, everything that you say. And uh, I'm following you, Pastor. I'm following you as you follow the Most High. I'm listening to that word. And uh, I'm here, Pastor. Love you. Shalom to all you saints out there scattered abroad. Bless you. All right. Bless you, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, brother Freeman. Glory to the king. All right. All right. We're going to go back to New York. We're on the East Coast right now. Go back to New York to brother in me. To brother in me. Call her number 347-347. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Strictly Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Ra'ah, Ben Yehuda. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, I just came across something real quick. Pastor, I came over to you to hold the message, right? And and you were talking about offense. You've been mentioning this for a while now. Like you've been mentioning this offense, offense, offense. That's what will make, you, that's what will make people for offense. And then I was thinking about the story. Remember, uh... Paul and the sorcerer that he was trying to cause people to fall. Yes. And he cursed them. Yeah. He put the blindness for a season. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. So, and then when you look at the definition of offense, that's basically what somebody that's offended. They make someone to try to put a stumbling block or try to uh, uh, try to make that person not hear or be under authority or who they should listen to. Am true. I correct? That's true. Very good. And so, so a person that's offended is a sorcerer. That's the same thing they're doing. Very good. When, a, when an offended person is speaking, right? Because they're trying to e e affect. That's crazy. No, you're spot on. Spot on. You got very good yes, understanding. Sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Pastor, I can't wait. Can't wait for the newsletter. I know you're going you're gonna to tear them up again. I'm excited for I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> and, uh... I'm just encouraged, Pastor. I'm encouraged. And I can't wait to hug your neck. And all yes, right, yeah. Hallelujah. I shall greet y'all with greetings and shalom. All the elders and all the sisters, all the wives and all the pastors. Shalom alaikum. Bless you, my Ra'ah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Ah. Shabbat shalom. Shalom alaikum. Glory to the King. Hey, I'm going to get to your phone calls. Y'all just bear with me, you know, the caller queue. It's probably about 20 people in the caller queue, so y'all just bear with me. We'll get there, all right? Uh, it looks like everybody's being courteous on their phone calls. They're getting straight to the point. They're not taking a long time uh, to explain anything, but they're, they're getting it done. So uh, <clears throat> just bear with me, and we will get to you, okay? Let's go to Ohio. Ohio, caller number 614. 614 to Brother Mike. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast? How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. 
Hey, it's about you long. How you doing this evening? I'm blessed of the most high Yah and highly favored. Name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Can't do any better than that. That's good. That's good. That's good. I wanted to ask you for your permission to attend Passover this year. Yeah, who is this? This is uh, Mike, Brother Mike. You got two Brother Mikes in Ohio. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, you can come, brother. Okay. Don't forget to bring a to know, uh, don't get to bring a tin and a cot. Well, I got half of it. I, I don't have the tip part, but that ain't too hard to get. I got half of it. All right. Make sure you bring some warm blankets, too. Or we don't know how the weather is going to be, but all the saints of Israel, they normally tend got and stuff. They used to camping out, but we're going to be camping out on the grounds. Everybody loves it, too. Oh, I've camped out before. Believe me, I love camping out. I don't know about a lot of people, but I love it. All but right. I'm not going to hold you up. I just wanted to ask for your permission. Bro, Mike, do me a favor. Do me a favor, bro, Mike. Call the dining hall. Uh, somebody will take your name down and add you to the list so we can make sure that we keep our logistics up, okay? All right. Well, you better boost that number to 271 now. All right, bro, Mike. Shabbat shalom. Thank you much, sir. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Glory to the king. Hey, remember, saints, if y'all come to Pesca, sir, it's Passover, you're coming to the place where Yahweh has put his name, don't come to the most high service empty. Man, I tell you, boy, you don't want to do that, I promise you. Glory to the king. Where are we at right now? All right, let's go to um, uh, Brother John in New York. New York, New York. Call number 201-201. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Strayway 230 or broadcast? How can I help you? Brother John. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Man, Brother John, it's good hearing your voice. You know it. Thank you, sir. It's good to hear you too, my pastor. Good to hear you too. Bless Israel. Go ahead. What you got, Brother John? I just wanted to call in and say Shabbat Shalom. I want to let you know that the Lord blessed me with uh, new employment, better employment. Good. I had patience through my trial, and the Lord gave me a blessing. And uh, I thank the Father for it. And uh, I just wanted to say, you know, before I came to this ministry, uh, I, was in a, I was in a very dark, bad place. You know, I used to suffer with, you know, anxiety attacks and depression, which I know which, uh, were demonic attacks. I just wanted to uh, thank you and the other pastors and the elders for everything and for being men of uh, honor and men of truth and uh, and uh, helping, you know, guide me in uh, the law of Yah and for being uh, reputable and honorable men of the Most High. And that's all I have, Pastor. I just want to say Shabbat Shalom and bless you and bless all straightway and all the saints scattered abroad. Well, Brother John, bless you, my brother. It's always good hearing from you. It really truly is. Um, you be encouraged, you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, Brother John. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Well, let's go all the way out on the West Coast to Grand Pass, Oregon, to Sister Marjorie. Call her number 541. 541, this is Pastor Dowell. You're on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you, Sister Marjorie? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Thank Shab you for taking my call. Oh, you're welcome. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Marjorie. Bless you. Uh, well, I was calling in regards to uh, the beginning uh, as far as uh, the sending of satellite tidings and uh, offerings. I uh, take this very seriously and uh, when I send it, I also take it seriously as far as how uh, I'm sending it securely and um, not necessarily like overnight shipping, but I do make sure that I do send it uh, so I have a tracking number and so the Postal Service is held responsible for that uh, package or envelope that I'm sending. Uh, they do insure it up to, I think, $100 at the beginning and whatever. But the main thing is that I figure that if I pay that extra $10 a month, 
which I feel uh, everything belongs to ya anyhow, that uh, that I'm just taking that little extra and uh, making sure that I have a tracking number and uh, that's going to maybe hopefully keep uh, them a little bit more uh, not so easily wanting to take a pay increase by opening up uh, an envelope <laughs> that may have uh, some money in it. And so... As a result, I think that this helps keep them honest, and um, and and it's just uh, you know, I hate to say, you know, uh, uh, people say it's human nature for this and that, but you know, stealing is stealing. So if I can help them stay honest, I will pay that extra ten dollars. It's no big deal because, like I said, after all, as far as I'm concerned, everything I have belongs to ya anyhow so uh, and I get a tracking number and so uh, they know that that package is supposedly uh, being tracked from you know from when the moment I take it to my place that I go to because you don't only you have to go to the post office there's many outlets that you know are businesses that uh, you can go to they may charge a little you know an extra dollar or so but sometimes uh, you can save yourself a lot of time and uh, stress because the lines aren't you know 20 30 people long either so uh, I just want to offer my experience with uh, with how I send my tithing and uh, also as far as um, comment on women being put down at straightway um, I've learned a lot through straightway and I think that that was you know just one of the things that I had to uh, think about, but by the time uh, you got to that part, uh, you had already covered so many other areas that I think about the fact that so many women are living. I grew up in a home where uh, my mom was a battered woman, not by my father, but by her choice in the second marriage. And uh, those women are uh, suppressed, beaten, children beaten, no security, no nothing, and it has nothing to do with because of men's uh, uh, doing, you know, reading the Bible or or anything like that. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, uh, I I've never I've been uh, uh, with straightway over four years now. And I've never heard of any horrible story, you know, like I, you hear out in the real world. Hallelujah. So, uh, people, women want are worried about being told what to do and how they're treated. I would be more afraid of the men outside of the, you know, Yah's world and uh, teaching. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. And uh, love you all. And uh, Shabbat Shalom. Bless you, Sister Marjorie. Shabbat Shalom. Glory to the King. Yeah, let me uh, say this, man. I tell you, you're talking about, I've been listening to the Sisters broadcast, and wow. Man, I, you know, I figured that people love Pastor Dabba. Man, I tell you, I didn't realize the Sisters, um, well, I guess I kind of did, but man, I appreciate all the love that you Sisters have for your pastor, uh, because I tell you, it's, 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 I'm telling you, prayer warriors like y'all, um, that is definitely keeping us all encouraged. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, it's a wonderful thing. It really, truly is. Um, I do appreciate it. I really, truly do because, um, man, what a wicked world we live in. Uh, I love you, sisters, because you're not afraid of the truth. You can stand. You don't care what the world says. You don't care what your family says. All you care about is what y'all say, and you're going to just do it. And I, and I tell you, that's real true strength right there. Glory to the King. Um, but hey, it's my honor to serve. I appreciate all the kind words. I really, truly do. Y'all keep praying for me, okay? All right, let's go to um, 
West Virginia, call number 304-304. This is Pastor Dow, General Survey 2 Radio Broadcast. How can I help you there in West Virginia? Shalom, Pastor Dow. It's uh, Tr- Brother Tristan. Hey, Brother Tristan. How are you, my brother? How you like that um, this past scripture study? Oh, I'm just overwhelmed with uh, with joy. It's more than I could have even hoped for. I mean, um, <laughs> literally three studies in one. Uh, that's that's unbelievable. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, your newsletter was was great. I mean, I I don't understand some of the people who um, who haven't uh, well who don't know the contents of it, obviously, because it's. You know, you've been preaching on it for for a while now, but that that was excellent, and um, and I just wanted to say, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to the rest of this study on on Yepta. I mean, it's just uh, un- unbelievable. I, I, I'm already convinced one way, so right. I don't know what's going to be more. Well, I tell you what, I've I've uh, pretty much come to a conclusion which I will bring out. Um, not the next scripture study, but the one after that. Excellent, excellent. And, and the only, fi- the final thing I wanted to say is, um, you know, uh, the, the Psalm fifty-one, that that song you sang by by Keith Green. You know, I, I really, hopefully, you know, pray that all the saints are reminded every day that you know, um, restore unto me the joy of Thy salvation, mm-hmm. uh, and renew a right spirit within me. Please don't take uh, Yahweh's uh, grace, um, you know, uh, lightly yes, and, uh, and take it for granted like all the other Christians do in this world. Very good word, Brother Tristan. Very good word. So true. Man, it rings true. Say all. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you go, Pastor Dow, and I want to say shalom to all the saints out there, and I, I look really forward to seeing everyone at Passover. Well, hallelujah. I'll tell you what, bring your camera and get ready to take a lot of pictures, because <laughs> they're going to be your brothers and sisters that you're going to meet, and they're going to love to want, they're going to hug on you, they're going to love to take pictures, and, and they, they just want to know who you are, and put a, put a face to the voice. Excellent, excellent. Well, shalom uh, to all the saints, and uh, see you later. All right, Brother Tristan. Bless you. Brother Tristan is the one who started this study on Yepta. <laughs> but what do you expect, though? I mean, both him and his wife got all his education and all his analytical mind, and they really, truly study. Um, and they want the truth. And they're digging for the truth. And they just want the truth, and they love it. Hallelujah. And and that's the reason why the ministry called it Straightway Truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the King. And it is a wonderful thing because even studying this, I've learned even more about a lot of things I didn't know. Um, but I also understand the reason why I believe what I believe, too, about um, Judges 11. But I did go into it with a very open mind. I really, truly did. I promise you that. Let's go to Florida. Florida. Uh, caller number 786786, Brother Alvin. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Strictly Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Alvin? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Brother Alvin. How can I help you? Hold on, I got you on speaker. There we go. I'm good to go now, Pastor. Oh, um, okay. Let me now. Oh, yeah. I want to ask you a question, uh, Pastor. When I sent you a uh, check, I took the name Pastor. I took the part Pastor out. That's what you wanted, correct? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, when y'all send in anything here, you do not have to put the title Pastor. You can just put Charles Dow. All I care. It doesn't trouble me, bother me one bit at all. I know y'all not dishonoring or disrespecting. Believe you me. And not only that, it's wise. Or well, you can just put Mister Dow. <laughs> Okay, yo, I remember you, you did a video on it talking about uh, they want to tax you and all that stuff, even though like the whole thing about the ministry. So I'm really sure to take off faster. I just send a, a normal check, you know. Yes, so I sir. Do it online through your bank. That's basically what I do. That's right. Um, let me see. What else did I ask? Oh yeah. Um, I was gonna. I know I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. Oh, um, faster out, but I'm not gonna. Well, obviously I didn't even have to go to faster, but I really have my heart set on it. 
and if it's the Father's will, um, I, I really want to go to, uh, what's it called? The one that goes after Passover, um, you got to wait seven Sabbaths, Pentecost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a little ways off. But, but yeah, you can come to Pentecost. Yeah. And Pentecost and God. Those are the two that I have my heart set on. It's the Father's will. I told myself this year, those are the two that I'm going for sure. It'll be my first time, obviously, but, you know. Well, I come just, on I up. I feel like I wanted to run it by you. Oh, oh fantastic. Do you know, I know you guys don't know the exact date, but are you going to have an idea when you're going to do God? Yeah, Pastor Fox uh, texted me about it the other day, and uh, more likely, um, I'll look at it, and I'll put it out, um, either scripture study, or next, or next blog talk, okay? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the, the further ahead I can go, the better, because like that, you know, I, I want to get financially stable to do it, and be able to get my vacation time. That's All right. Super exciting. Hallelujah. Sounds, <laughs> sounds good to me. So forward to you start. Talk about that, Pastor. Um, I look so forward because I guess I didn't get caught up in the ministry with you guys when you were covering spiritual warfare. And, like, I'm just really looking forward to you starting to cover spiritual warfare because I definitely need to try to guide it in that area. I have ideas, but like, that idea is my idea, you know? Yes, sir. I definitely need guidance in that. And that's it, Pastor. Just, I, remember, I pretty much remembered everything <laughs> that I was going to say. Um, just, I just want to say I to all the saints and everybody, and thank you for everything you do, sir. And All I look forward to meeting everyone. Hallelujah, sir. All right. Bless you, Brother Alvin. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, you know, I, when I take the phone calls, brother and sister, somebody's asking, I usually call out the area code, and if there's a name in a caller queue, I'll, I'll get a caller name. But you notice um, I give ample amount of time while I'm telling you the area code, who I'm going to next for you to make the changes so you don't have to blast us with a voice overtone coming from your computer and everything so that, you know, the saints will be able to hear you. So that's the reason why I take the route that I do. We have Elder Rufus uh, in here from Georgia, a community down there in Straightway, Georgia. Elder Rufus calling number 706706. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. Hey, how can I help you, Elder? Well, I guess Elder Rupert's not talking. Don't know what happened there. Uh, but his name came up in the queue. All right. Let's go to... Uh, where we at? There's one right there in Georgia. Again, 706. I think I... I can't remember if I got this or not. Hey, have I picked you up before 706? No, no, Pastor. This is New South. Shalom, oh. um, Pastor. Shalom. This is... Uh... Hello, this is Brother Barry Shock, bringing out your rail, formerly known as Brother Devlin. Oh, okay. Bless you, Brother Devlin. Bless you. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> All right. Dari Shock. Yeah, I was just, I was just, yes, sir. Call out. Yes, sir. Um, to, to, to give it to me. I was just calling to uh, tell you about Shalom. I can't wait to uh, see all the things that pass over. And um, happy beginning of the year. Rosh Hashanah. It's the first day of the new year. I'm just happy to be in the new year and a new start. Uh, get ready to throw the most high better and with more fervent and vigor than I ever done before in the past. I tell you what, Darisha, you you starting some 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 mess with these Jewish people like I do antagonizing them by, by saying happy Rosh Hashanah because them boogers don't know where they coming or going, trying to hijack our stuff and twist it up. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. They don't know. They don't because they're not the people. Hallelujah. All right, my brother. All right, bless you. All right, where were we at right here? Let's go to Florida to Sister, looks like it's Sister Hall. Sister Hall down in Florida calling number 813-813. This is Pastor Dow, you know, Survey Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you there, Sister Hall? Shalom, Pastor Sister Haley. Sister Haley. Wonder why Brother Shane got Sister Hall down there. Bless you, Sister Haley. <laughs> Bless you, Pastor Dow. Um, how are you doing this about Easter? 
I'm doing all right, doing very well. Believe it or not, I'm in here still paying attention to the moon, the moon cycle and stuff. But, you know, I got this thing, this program right here that's called Night Sky. And, um, you know, you can actually see where all the constellations is and everything. But I'm paying attention to broadcast first and foremost. But I'm doing all right. What about yourself? Hallelujah. I'm blessed, Pastor. Um, I'm on my way to actually for the saints that they told us to fellowship with them this July. Oh, glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, bless the Yahweh that they allow us to um, enter into their homes, you know, loving God first and then loving us. Right. You got that right. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Um, I just wanted to take you, Israel. Bless you too, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Man, I tell you, all these wonderful Israelite sisters and brothers and Israelite brothers, it's just a blessing here. You know, I, uh, Yahshua said to the emissaries, he said to Shimon Kepler, he said, hey, do you, do you barack me? Do you love me? Um, he said, yeah. He said, feed my sheep. He asked him again, hey, Shemal, Kepler, hey, do you love me? Come on, master, you know I love you. You know what he said? Feed my sheep. Ask him a third time. Hey, Shemal, Kepler, do you love me? Hey, Lord, come on. Yeah, you down, no. Come on, you know. No, I love. He says, feed my lambs. What he says, one, he says to all the men of y'all, you can tell how much I love the Father by how much you are getting fed. That's how much you know how much I love the Father and how much I love you because you are getting fed with knowledge and understanding. And that is the truth. And that's the truth straight way. Let's go to, let's see what we have. Brother Greg, and then we'll go to Pennsylvania. Let's go to Brother Greg in Texas. Call number 214-214. This is Pastor Dow. you on the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. I can help you, Brother Greg. Hello, Pastor. It's a possibility. It's like, okay, it's likely that I'll be coming to Passover. Man, we'll be looking forward to seeing you then. Just if you are coming, make sure you... Let us know when you're arriving, how you're arriving, and when you're leaving. Call the dining hall, give them the information so we can make sure we can pencil you in, my brother. All right. Well, Elder Becker already got me booked, though. Okay. Uh, already got me on it written down. So I'll be I'll be coming. And if if I if I get transportation, I'll be coming, which I'm. It looks like that's likely. So. All right. Looking forward Just to seeing y'all know. All right, okay. Shalom. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Going to be good to see Brother Gray for the first time. Hallelujah. Let's go to Pennsylvania to Brother Tyree. Call number 215-215. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Sermon 2 Radio Broadcast. How can I help you there, Brother Tyree? Shabbat Shalom, my pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Tyree. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hear the children. Listen to the children. Shabbat Shalom, children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. Um, the the newsletter 
great. Scripture study was awesome. I mean, it's awesome. I'm still actually, uh, you know, I have to go back over that again as well. And last scripture study as you was on uh, Turning of the Cheek? Yes. Yes. Um, I was reading uh, the book of Susanna. And it got to the book of Susanna uh, right around uh, 62, verse uh-huh. 2. And according to the law of Moses, they did, they did unto them in such sort that they maliciously intended to do to their neighbor. Now they call the Israelite a, a neighbor. It reminds me of what you were saying about turning the other cheek. These wicked deceivers and these, you know, churches that we, well, these places that we grew up, these pagan temples we grew up at, they have got us into this wicked way of believing that the whole world is our neighbor. The whole world is who you turn your cheek to. Is a, is a crazy, nasty deception. And what we were just talking about, I was talking about that earlier today, to somebody that's trying to come in and they're, 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 you know, I'm actually fishing for them little by little, little by little, little by little. When I first came into the faith, I was trying to stick the whole net in and grab them, grab them up, and they was fleeing from me. I dropped the whole... I dropped the whole load on them, and they ran from me quickly. Bam! I was like, oh, man, I done did wrong. You know, I, done, I dropped it all on them, and they done, they ran from me. So, you know, we have, uh, I have a guy named El. He's actually a Muslim. He's saying he's trying to come out of, of that, and he believes in Jesus Christ. He He's trying to call Jesus a prophet, and, you know, all the other, you know, wicked things that, you know, these deceivers done did to our people. And I introduced him to you. I let him see some of your videos, and he was on it. He was like, I let him listen to uh, uh, the Hebrews, the the, we, the Israelites, and he was like, he was so on it. He was like, Yo, I want to know how to convert to y'all people. I said, Convert? Ain't no converting. Keep the commandments. And he was just like, What? What, what do you mean? I said, Well, yeah, just come over on the Sabbath or something. You know, listen to Pastor, and uh, you know, see how you like it. Yeah. You know? And uh, it, it's been a blessing since I came into this walk. And, uh, you know, I had family members that was Israelites, and uh, I was very angry when, when I heard your voice and you started to talk to me about a lot of the things that you said. And it, 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 it made me very angry because I, I, I realized I was being deceived on a, on a great level, and also at the same time I was deceiving my, my children and my family because I was walking in my own way. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's a shame, you know, but I'm so blessed that the Most High Yah had blessed me with the Holy Holy Spirit. And I and I beg him, I just was praying, I beg him not to take it from me no more. I don't want it. I, no, no, no. I, I'm here. I'm here to stay. I love this walk. I love this walk from the morning. I, when, I, when I wake up, when I go to sleep, I love it. Just fighting myself. It's a blessing, Pastor. How have you been doing? Been doing well, you know, you know what I mean. Going, I did. You know, I'd be rambling. I want to hear from you. How have you been doing that? Ah, uh, you know, I'm doing well. You know, I'm, I work hard, getting ready, getting and myself and the brethren, we getting things ready to receive the saints of the Most High Yah this Pesca season right here. So you know, um, uh, we we do, you know, we we work hard out here straightway. That's all I can say. We work very hard, and so therefore, we when we get tired, we're tired. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we want to, we, we're going to ask, can we be able to come to Paso? We're trying to get everything in order to see if we will be able to come out and start a new job. I, I'm self-employed, but I'm actually going to be starting a job on the table for a little while. But uh, Sister Sonisha, she's asleep right now. She's, uh, you know, we're about to have another baby, you know, another, you know, another Israelite child. So, you know, it's, it's you know, this baby will be coming in this world without no vaccines, and she's ready to pop. So, uh. We want to come so bad. I've never been to any pass or I've never been to any feast of y'all, and I would love to come. I'm just trying to get everything together and also clean out the living in our houses, you know. How um, how far along is your wife? Uh, she's about uh, probably like three more months to go, Pastor. All right, I think that's a still a safe time to travel and stuff, but we have to make sure that she's comfortable now, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. But if y'all plan on coming, just make sure you... um. Call the dining hall, Brother Tyree, and leave, let us know how many coming and, and um, you, you know when y'all coming in so we can get everything ready to receive y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. I called down. I talked to the dining hall already. I talked to Sister Ashley. 
uh, your wife, and uh, I, I talked to Sister Heather, and uh, I was I was letting them know, and uh, I trust. Thank you for all the sisters as well for helping me channel uh, a lot of the stuff that y'all been putting on there for for food and stuff. We have been enjoying the mayonnaise, <laughs> everything, everything. You know, we have been enjoying. I mean. It, one after another is just so edifying. It's, it's very edifying. There's so much on my plate right now just from the word. Um, you know, I have a lot to go behind. And, you know, like I said, there's a lot. Of, I'm very scared right now, especially to come to Passover. I just want to make sure I'm right. And, you know, I want to make sure I'm right. You know, it's coming into a bunch of lives and living a lie for so long, you just really want to be able to come to the Passover right. Well, hallelujah. Yes, Work. Pastor. Work on the temple. Yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Bless you, pastors. Bless you, elders. Bless you, brothers. Bless you, mothers. Don't forget my teachers. Bless you, teachers. Bless you, sisters. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It's Brother Tyree down in Pennsylvania. Now, I keep getting this up. I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to try this one more time down there in Georgia. Elder Rufus, call number 706. 706. Pastor Dow, going to serve you to radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, sisters. How y'all doing, daughters? Uh, Pastor, 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 Bless you, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. That's all the boys, man. They, you know, they're young. It's kind of hard for me to figure that out. Glory to the king. Glad they called. Let's go to Ohio. Brother Mike, call him at 614-614. Uh, this is Pastor Dow. You're going to serve you to the radio broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Mike? Pastor Dow, my brother, my pastor. What's happening? What's happening? I got this newsletter right here in my hands. I made it home. I got it right here in my hands. <laughs> you you gonna you gonna you gonna you knocking it out, ain't you? Oh, I'm done with it. When the broadcast when the broadcast started, I, I went on up to the bedroom and laid down. I needed some peace and quiet. I wanted to get at it, you know. I, I've been out on the road a couple of weeks, but I got it in my hand, and, and I went through it, and I looked at it, and, and, and one of the things, well, let me ask you this before I go to, into the newsletter, Pastor. Did you receive any notice about anyone wanting to debate on the subject of polygyny? I know you put it out there, but have you received any phone calls, emails, letters, smoke signals, anything? Nothing, nothing at all. I think I got one email of somebody who would just like to discuss it with me, but but no, nobody ever wants to stand across from a podium in a crowded room and discuss this particular subject, this truth with me at all. Wow. I mean, Abraham, our father of faith, Jacob, Moses, Gideon, David, you mean to tell me you have not received one notice? Not one. Not one. Well, that, well, that says it all. But anyway, brother, my pastor, I really thank you because the newsletter comes uh, uh, in a very informative way that whether you be a, a scholar from one of them big high-dollar education centers, ain't nothing wrong with it, ain't nothing wrong with being smart. But or uh, whether you be like Brother Mike, who's gonna sit down with this newsletter with his 17 year old son tomorrow after Sabbath service, he's gonna go through this, and still, no matter what level you are, it just brings it all. Truth just comes out, and the truth touches all levels. All you get, the truth is the truth. But I do have one question, man. Go ahead. How in the hell did they translate white from a musical in? Brother Mike, I tell you, you're going to be utterly surprised as we continue to keep going forward. All I can say is, is that these European societies are a monoligamous society, even though they do not live that way. They have it on the books that way, they don't live that way. But they had a particular religious agenda. 
and they were going to do everything they could to accomplish it. Uh, of course, you know, by the time I get to the renewed covenant and tear up own husband, own wife, husband of one wife, wife, you know, all that. By the time I get finished ripping all that apart, uh, that, that Christianity is going to be on life support if it's still alive. <laughs> Rip it apart, man. Because my pastor will not be kept in a corner any longer. You got that so right. The most you got that right. You got that right. Hey, Pastor, I, I want to send a shout out to my elder Spinney. Elder Spinney, uh, last week on the uh, uh, Seventh Day Evening broadcast, I appreciate that spiritual tune up you gave me, Elder Spinney. I love you. And I'm going to be going through that again tomorrow. And uh, uh, I appreciate that, brother. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hey, Pat. Yes, sir. Pat, how about, how about Israel get, giving that Ten Commandments? I'm, I'm crying and hallelujah. I'm down in Florida, north of Miami. Sister Lisa up here 1,200 miles away. She went into speaking in tongue and everything. Oh, we had us a good time, brother. And then the way y'all lined up the songs. You know, the order of the of the musical selection. Oh, man, we had such a good time. Oh, we had such a good time. We had us a good time. Yes, we did. I had such a good time. You know, when we got to, to, to your there, uh, I started out on my own groove, just really just loving and praising. and broke out again. I broke out, did the brother work, and wrapped it up with the sister Zsa I had me a good time. <laughs> Yes, I did. Now, tomorrow, I'm, I'm home now, Pastor. I got plenty of room. I got plenty of room. We might even move some furniture around up in here. I'm home now. Hallelujah. And at tomorrow, you going to play it tomorrow, Pastor? If you want to hear it tomorrow, we'll play it tomorrow. Yeah, I want to crank up the big speakers. I ain't going to bother the neighbors, though. I ain't going to play it that loud. I just, I might. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Be the father's will. I'm going to leave it right there. All right, my brother. Always good hearing from you, brother Mike. We like the pastor down. Love you too. Hey, you get ready if if you if y'all able to make it down, um, the, the play one of these songs for Gabriel because you know during the feast, um, that's a lot of drum playing. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be ready. I'll help out. I'm more than ready. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're coming down. Be the fathers. We all we've been through. You know, we've been through this last year, but we're ready this year. Last year, the adversary does everything he can do. He uses people. We already trained up for it. We already trained up to cast down. We already trained up and being built up by the Most High. We know who we're praying to. We know who he is. And, I mean, we give all thanks glory to the Father, the Most High, and thanking him for the Straightway Truth Ministry and delivering these things to us through your ministry. All those things you suffered, you gave up, Pastor, I tell you, we drive to get to Walmart. We drive past this church called World Hearts. I don't know if y'all heard of that, but they they've been on the on, on the on the uh, big TV on the yeah uh, yeah. What's the name? Uh, of, is that that's a uh, Rod Parsley? Rod Parsley. Now he was raised Seventh Day Adventist, so he knows the Sabbath. But you know they messed up with all that other stuff. But he know what day is the Sabbath. But when we ride past there, I always tell us please look over there. Look at that school. Look at that apartment building. Look at that football field. Look at that church. I have to down, turn down all that. Yep. To go late, to go late block, work on the land, garden, farm. It's true. <laughs> Get this truth out there. Tell people the truth. And he can have all that. That man got a lot of money. Yeah, but hey, look what he had to do. He had to go and bite the fruit of lies. He had to bow down. And serve the God of this world in order to get it. Because if he was raised seven day Adventist, he know about the Sabbath, so he chose not to keep the commandments. So he better enjoy everything that he got in his life because he's going to spend a long time paying for it. <laughs> well, Pastor, we're going to let you get back to back to the broadcast, get some more saints on there. It really does uplift me to hear saints call in, hear testimonies, and and everything they have to give. I look forward to this broadcast uh, uh, just as much as I look forward to the message tomorrow. All right, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you. Uh, brother Mike, 
He did tell the truth. That I did give all it up. Well, Pastor Dow, you ain't never had it. Now, hold on for a second. You think here for a second. No, I ain't never had it. I have not only, see, them people got words. Are you following me? Not only am I charismatic enough, but I have the power of the Holy Spirit. I have the charisma, the knowledge, the understanding. I know exactly how. By now, I could have had the largest church in Tennessee. Period. In Tennessee, bar none. But to do it, I would have had a compromise. I would have had to bite the fruit of lies. Did I ever tell you about that time I had a demon come to me and tell me if I just toned down the word and everything, that'd make me a great preacher. I said, go to hell and went back to sleep. Exactly what I did. And um, most of you people, you just don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah, early on, I wasn't even probably filled with the Holy Spirit. Two, three days, I had a vision and a dream. Two, three days. Can you imagine throwing all that on top of somebody that don't know nothing about nothing spiritually? It was no more than maybe, I think, six, seven years ago, I had another vision. And I, don't, I only had two visions since I've been um, an Israelite. And I tell you what, all I had to do was bite, bite of the fruit of lies. I could have had the largest church. I ought to put all them churches out of business in Nashville. But all I, you know what? Satan can go to hell. He can take this world and he can shove it up his ass as far as I'm concerned. He can take it right on the hell with his ass as far as I'm concerned because there ain't no way I ain't compromising a damn thing for the kingdom. You can forget that. I ain't never did it, and I ain't about to start. Satan can kiss my ass if he thinks I'm going to ever compromise the kingdom of Yah. That ain't going to happen. Why do you think I keep myself in the love of Yah and study and pray and fight against wind and tide? I know who the devil's using. He's using human beings. I know exactly what he's doing with the attack and stuff. And I'd be damned if I'm going to sit up here and sell my soul for the lamentations of a bunch of damn human beings is going to live in eternal hell just so I can have a plus life for a few damn years when I can rule into the king in the kingdom of Yah for all of eternity. Oh hell, that's a bad deal. Hell no, it's a bad deal. But besides all that, I love him who gave himself for me. You better believe it. And Pastor Dow, I ain't compromising shit. Do you understand what I said? You can forget it. I ain't looking back. I'm keeping my hand on the plow. I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Yah in Christ Jesus. I ain't looking to my left. I'm not looking to my right. It's straight forward. And I'm going full damn speed of head. And I'm going to knock every damn spiritual demon, demonic spirit, and every damn human being that opposes me, that lifted up that voice against me in judgment. I'm going to condemn your ass. I promise you I will. And I'm going to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Yah in Christ Jesus. I'm going in. You better believe it. And I'm taking a lot of saints with me. And we're going to rule in the kingdom forever and ever and ever. And the saints of the Most High, y'all shall possess the kingdom. Hallelujah. And they shall have it forever and ever and ever and ever. So to hell with this world. To hell with the fruit of lies that many of you damn people done bit off of. And still biting up today. You can forget it. I'm already bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is the truth. And that's the truth straight damn way. How about that? Believe that. Let's go over here to Illinois. Caller number 815-815. This is Pastor Dow. You're on Straight with Truth Radio Broadcast. How can I help you? Pastor Dollar is snapping. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom. Hey, man. You just keep it up. I got a question for you about Ephesians chapter 4. Sure. Who is this? <clears throat> this is Mike Wersko. Hey, how are you doing? Ephesians 4, what you got? <clears throat> well, I want to start at verse 8 and read up to uh, verse 15. 
It says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is what is it that but that he also descended first in the lower parts of the earth? He that descended, <clears throat> excuse me, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of Yah, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm-hmm. And we have to be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. All right. <clears throat> By the sl- oh, excuse me. With every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is ahead, even Christ. My question is, um, is this talking about something off in the future, the five old ministry? Hey. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. He's talking about right now, here and now. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Here, let me, uh, hold on a second. Sorry, go ahead. No, when he ascended up, when he, first of all, he descended first and he took the keys of death right. from the devil, all right? And then he went and he, um, um, presented himself before the Father as a clean lamb, holy sacrifice. So, but when he did that, he also gave gifts. When he gave us the Ruach Hakadesh, he gave us gifts. Remember in the um, what they commonly call the Old Covenant. We're gonna keep it so that people can understand. Um, they had yeah, priests. Not, right? Yeah, they had priests. They had judges. They had elders. They had you know stuff like that going. So, when we get to the Renewed Covenant. Um, remember, because the priesthood changed because the Messiah is our priest. So, therefore, we don't have that priesthood anymore. But what he did do is he gave us gifts by anointing people to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And it's clear what it says, because verse 12, it says, These men are, look, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work okay. of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body, and look what it says, till we all come into the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of Yah, to a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature and the fullness of Christ. And the reason why, that we need to listen to men that have the spirit of Yah, that he gave gifts to, look what he says, that we henceforth no more children, be no more children, tossed to and fro, and cared about with every wind of doctrine because it seems like everybody always got something to say. But but everybody right. is not a gift. And I always tell people, if you come across somebody who claims to be a man of Yah, and yet they don't have any power, then you can forget about it. You can go ahead and count them out that they are not apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers uh, sent by the Messiah for the Most High Yah. And that is the truth. Right. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people get into all this messianic stuff, and then they end up Catholic or Greek Orthodox, because there seems to be that kind of structure. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, you're right. You're right. And they're deceived. They run to that because it's like, because they're like, there's, there's authority, there's structure here. And, you know, I've seen more than one person actually do it. Oh, and to be honest, I considered it myself. <laughs> but, you know, no, I'm not going that route. But I just wanted to, you know, hear what you had to say about that. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right, Saints. Hey, that's it. We are tapping out. That was it. I greet each and every last one of you. I bless each and every last one of you. The sweet presence is strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name. I'll soon come to King Yahshua HaMashiach. Be the Father's will. And I believe it is his will. 
We'll see y'all Shabbat morning. The king is coming. Shabbat Shalom. Uh-oh, look at him looking. <laughs>